Right then, so welcome to Chimp on Cars. I've got a video today from Hearn Bay. We're looking at the Hearn Bay Test Centre, looking at some of the bits that might cause you an issue on a Hearn Bay driving test. Hearn Bay's in uh, Kent, for those of you that don't know. Um, so in fact, we're coming up to the Hearn Bay Test Centre now. So if you're not already done so, of course, subscribe to the channel. We'll uh, not only be looking at bits to help you through your driving test, but some bits for the after your test too. So, just going past the test centre, looks reasonably quiet in there at the moment. Right, so when you start your driving test at Home Bay, there are a few tricky bits you need to be looking out for. You'll always be turning left at this roundabout. And when we're coming up to this next roundabout, if we're going ahead, we need the uh, right hand lane as you can see. So going left, you need the left lane, right, you need your right lane. We're going to follow the road ahead as if we've asked to be done this if they've asked us to do this on my driving test so I'm in the right hand lane waiting for a gap and then maintaining the right hand lane of course check the left mirror signal left to leave so as long as you get yourself in the correct lane there then it's straightforward enough of course if you've got yourself in the left hand lane there um, to follow the road ahead at the roundabout you would have to either change lanes safely if you had time to change lanes you could do that safely or alternatively you just just have to go left when you left go the wrong way. Okay so we've got a few more bits to the Herne Bay test route. So I'm not going to take you around a complete test route in Herne Bay because I want to show you the trickier bits rather than just uh, go and do a random test route. I want to show you some of the bits that cause people to fail their driving test or have done for me over the years. I've been a driving instructor since 2006. I've conducted many tests over here in Herne Bay and <laughs> Many people have failed, unfortunately, for many different things. And I'm just going to show you the top ones, the bits that could cause people issues on a driving test. So if you've got a test in Herne Bay coming up, then this will hopefully help you to equip yourself to uh, pass it. Pass it first time would be awesome. So I'm just leaving this exit here. So you can see I've just um, indicated and made my way off. So if you come down this little slip road here, you'll always be taking the little road on the left. It's just after this bridge here, so I'm going to pop the indicator back on. It's a little bit tricky to see where the side road is when you're first coming down here. I've been down here many hundreds of times, of course, I know exactly where the side road is, but um, worth looking out for that one. So as we come around here then, we are going to come around a corner and then find a junction straight upon us. Turning left at the junction would be straightforward enough. It's what I'm going to do is show you how to position to turn right at the junction. So I'm going to start checking the mirrors and positioning early. You can see there's road markings. To go right, we have to get right across to where the giveaway line comes up. So you're turning left, you'd just be keeping close to the curb, of course, like you always would be when you're turning left. But I've seen, unfortunately, many people fail their test for trying to turn right at that junction from a position that's too far over to the left. They've not kept right up towards the middle of the road, kept on the correct side of the road, of course, but you've got to get yourself right up to the middle white line there. So um, I'm going to cut this video a couple of times just to cut out some of the more boring bits so you don't have to uh, watch through loads of easy bits. But we've got an awkward junction just coming up along here. So this little bit of road here is actually national speed limit. Worth pointing out that, of course, we're not going to get anywhere near 60 miles an hour on this little bit of road here. But let's imagine we're coming up here and the examiner or the sat nav has asked us to take the road off to the right. You see the triangular sign for it. I'm going to check the mirrors and signal. It's virtually straight ahead. But we've just got to keep our position in. So if something's coming from the left there, I need to be able to stop and let it pass. But there wasn't. And then I can make my turn into the road here. If I'd have started drifting across, started turning right into the side road too soon, then potentially if something was coming around that corner, um, which I should have been stopping for, giving way to, then I would have felt myself in an awkward position to do that. This little junction here is particularly awkward. I'm in a diesel car. I'm actually going to go down to first gear for this one because it's difficult, it's tight. There was nothing coming out of it, but I wanted to be prepared just in case something was coming out of it, which... Um, is what I did there, just by bringing the speed down, it allowed me to do something if something had appeared coming towards me. Okay, so heading now down into Hearn Bay. I'll uh, cut the video, we'll come back to this shortly. Right then, so this little bit down here, so on the driving test then the examiner or the sat nav may well be asking you to take the second road on the right there are two roads really quite close to each other it's going particularly slow today to give that car time to park and you see the two roads there on the right they're virtually on top of each other it's the road that silver car's pulling out of i'm turning into it's the second of the two roads so i'm going to have to indicate what would be considered a little bit too early 
um, because the roads are virtually on top of each other there, you've got to indicate a little bit earlier than you'd like to. So it could look from the indicator like you're going down into either one of those. Nothing you can do about that when they're that close to together, to be honest, is there? Okay, so that road we just turned into was Sea View Road, I think it's called, and we're now in the road that runs parallel to it, which is Cliff Avenue. We're going to turn right out of the end of Cliff Avenue, so I've checked the mirrors and signalled. We've got to be really careful of our position here because cars could turn into the road, as this car in fact is doing in front of me. There we go. So if I keep my position over to my side of the road, there you go. So if anybody else wants to turn in, they've got plenty of room to. I can just check both ways and turn out safely. So my position there would have been very easy to position on the wrong side of the road there. And you know, that was quite obvious because the car was actually turning in as I approached the end of the road, which made it easy for us to see, great for the video. Um, but invariably there won't be somebody turning into the road as you approach there on your driving test. And you've just got to think about getting your position, you know, keeping over to your side of the road enough so that if a car wants to turn in, they can turn in. So let's go and find some more potentially tricky bits to this Hearn Bay test area. So just driving along one of the uh, many small roads in Hearn Bay, parked cars on both sides of the road. And I'm just going to turn right, I think it's a little road called Ivanhoe Road, so I'm just going to take the uh, next road on the right. I'm already in gear two. Spencer Road we're turning into. You see how there's parked cars right on the junction there, makes it awkward, doesn't it? Makes it more interesting. So now if the examiner don't say anything or the uh, sat nav don't say anything, we are just following the road ahead. So I've got a crossroad here. So I've waited at the white line. I've not stopped completely. It's not a stop junction, just enough to look both ways and to emerge out safely there. There are quite a few crossroads in Herne Bay, so it's really important to um, spot where the white lines are, the giveaway lines. And if you're crossing the giveaway line, then of course you need to be giving way. And the only way you're going to be giving way is if you uh, bring your speed down adequately and um, stop if necessary, look both ways for certain. So it's going to come to the end of this road, loads of parked cars, you can see there's actually a van, the doors open on the van, so I'm going to be very slow past this, there's almost certainly somebody working near that van. Cool, safe to go through. Nice slow speed to uh, make that judgement though. So I'm just going to turn left at the end of the road out into Mickleborough Hill. So, it was a signal, maybe a little early on the signal there, and a good position, very narrow end of the road. Right, can't see very much either way here, so very much a creep and peep to a junction. Yeah, there we go. Get yourself to a position where you can see enough and then go, that's all I did there. So I'm going to turn left at this roundabout, really tricky this because we've got a pedestrian crossing just after we've exited the roundabout. So obviously I'm judging the roundabout first, looking, keeping the position. Now I've got to be looking at both sides of that crossing there. I need to stop. If there's anyone waiting to cross, I need to stop, of course. You know that already if you're getting ready for your driving test. But you can see there how my thoughts might have been uh, taken up by the roundabout, particularly if it was a little bit busier. And I'd be so pleased to have found a gap on the roundabout that I might have just gone and um, not given that pedestrian crossing there due care and attention and um, you know I've had people pay, fail in the past um, for just driving through the crossing there even though somebody's waiting to, uh, to, to use the crossing I've never had anyone do anything more dangerous than that never had anyone uh, really in danger of pedestrian but of course you fail your test if there's somebody waiting to cross as I'm sure you know Okay then, so now we're coming up to um, three roundabouts we're going to use. Now these roundabouts, each of them have got two lanes coming up to them, two lanes between the roundabouts, and we need to be positioning ourselves to deal with the roundabout that we've got coming up, and then be thinking about what we're going to do with the next roundabout, which lane we need to be in to do what we need to do with the next roundabout. So it's not awful, it's not really tricky but it's something you just need to practice I'd recommend practicing it before the day of your test comes along so what I'm going to do is turn right at the first roundabout left at the second one and then follow the road ahead at the third one so right at this one there are only two exits so I'm indicating right I'm in the right hand lane it is off to the right 
and yeah I'm safe to do this so I'm keeping to the right hand lane then in the indicator left to leave because I'm going left at the next roundabout I can just leave straight off into that left lane if I was going right at that next roundabout then I could have kept to the right hand lane that's the key to this you can always change lanes if we get it a little bit wrong but if you get yourself in the correct lane then you're making life very easy for yourself and again with this one I'm going ahead at the next roundabout so straight to this left lane here I can change lanes of course if I wanted to turn right but I'm going ahead so I'm keeping to the left lane and yep safe to do so so I'm keeping to the left lane maintaining the left lane as I come around here not straight line in the roundabout and signaling left to leave and we're coming into Hearn now into Hearn village so Hearn village is a good one for us to practice in we've got a really steep hill here so those of you that know the area will know that there's a windmill and at the top of a hill obviously best place to put a windmill is at the top of a hill so there's quite a steep hill leading up to that windmill so let's go and have a look at that again tight junction loads of these in Herne Bay so if you check the mirrors for a left I'm going to indicate left and I'm going to bring the speed right down I'm going to go slower into this than I would do a normal size junction because if anyone's coming out of this road I need to be prepared to deal with them keep to my side of the road until it's time to go around those cars there okay so we get a little hill start here a little practice one at the junction so we're going to turn right at the junction to get to the nice steep hill can't see enough to do anything other than first gear I'm going to look both ways actually no need to stop completely you see how the road just bears around here that's a little separate road over there to the right we're not going into there we're just keeping on this road just bearing back around there you see the hill starting to come in we're climbing up the hill the round the um, windmills at the top of the hill I'm going to stop about halfway up the hill here where it gets a little bit steep so stopping's not too much of an issue, I've got a car behind so I've indicated to let them know I'm stopping and handbrake in neutral, securing the car, if the car's rolling back a bit just pull the handbrake on a bit tighter. Right now you see with the white car at the top of the hill there is just going around a corner, this red van's going to show us too, it is just a corner up the top there, that red van's not indicating right, they're just going around a corner, nice and easy to do, so we're going to do that. So you can see the situation now, there's not much distance between where I am now and where that corner is at the top there. So I'm quite an experienced driver, of course you've probably guessed, I can pull away in first and probably change gear into second gear and go around that corner quite safely. But is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to, I'm in a diesel car, so I've got high range gears anyway, I'm going to leave it in first gear. And even in a petrol car, I would recommend pulling away, leaving it in first gear, getting around that corner and then dealing with your gear change. So let's see how that looks. So I'm going to get a nice biting point, I've got a hill assist on this car. I'm going to check around, I'm still going to do it properly with a nice biting point check again as I pull away so I've got myself a nice hill start there plenty of videos on how to do hill starts so rather than trying to get into gear two and rushing things I'm just going to keep it in gear number one because this is quite a sharp corner keep to my side of the road could be somebody coming the other way so now I've kept, gone around the corner I've kept to the correct side of the road now I can change into gear two and be on with my journey there so you see how there by trying to get into gear two I could have made it more difficult for myself and um, well it's my driving test the last thing I want to do is make it more difficult for myself so that's what I would recommend that you guys do too if you come this way for your driving test nice easy junction here gear one I could see loads there couldn't I so I've just merged out without stopping and um, if I was in a petrol car I might have even been able to do that in gear two but certainly in a, a diesel that was a gear one junction because I had quite a bit of steering to do didn't I Okay, so let's go and find some more potentially tricky bits to a Hearn Bay driving test. I'm going to go back to those roundabouts, in fact, those three roundabouts that are at the top of each other. And we're going to have a look at those. Okay, so I'm just coming out to the dual carriageway. You've got Hearn Village behind me. Hearn Bay's over the other side there. I can only turn left here, of course, as you can see from the signs. I'm joining quite a fast road, so even though there's quite a gap between me and that car, I'm not going to pull out in front cause them to have to slow down or stop suddenly with a 40 mile an hour zone and they were doing about 40. Okay so we've got those three roundabouts coming up again then so I'm going to use all three of them so what I'm going to do is turn right at the first one I'm going to then uh, turn right at the second one and then I'm going to turn left at the last one we're going to look at how we um, how we get ourselves positioned in the correct lane and think about not only the roundabout that we're on but the roundabout we've got coming up so Here's the, uh, the walkway going across that goes from Hearn Village over into Hearn Bay. I'm going to look to change lanes in good time. There is a car coming up behind me, but we're doing the speed limits. They're not gaining on me. I'm not pulling away. And there we go. I've got a nice easy gap there. So I've got myself into the right lane nice and early. If there was a long queue there, 
that becomes far more important of course. Right then, so I'm going right to third exit of this first roundabout and then right second exit of the second roundabout and then left at the final one. So I'm going to get into gear number two, I can see across the bridge there, so I'm not just looking at what's coming from the right, I'm looking at what's coming across the bridge. So I started in the right lane, staying in the right lane, there's the first exit. And then I'm going to come up and turn off. So because I'm going right at this next roundabout, you see I've positioned myself in the right hand lane. If I'd have gone across to the left lane, then I need to try and change lanes or just go a different way. As long as I do what I'm doing safely, I'm still going to pass. So I'm turning right at this one and then I'm going left at that last roundabout, aren't I? So let's indicate left to leave. There's nobody alongside me, so I can just come straight across into the left lane there. Cancel the indicator just because of St Augustine's Court there, and then I can just reapply the indicator and then go left first exit at the roundabout, providing it's safe to do so, which it is on this occasion. So you can see there how getting into the correct lane coming up to the roundabout, I've made life very easy for myself, but there's quite a bit of gap between the roundabouts, so you can always change lanes if you need to. As long as you change lanes safely, then no one's going to have any issue with that at all. That's what you're going to do after your test, so it's what you're going to do on your test as well. And the only issue is going to come if you change lanes dangerously or um, you try and, you know, for example, turn right at a roundabout but use the left hand lane. That's never going to go down too well with an examiner, is it? It's, um, it's not what we want you to do after you've passed your driving test. So they're going to foul you and uh, make you take some more lessons, come back and not do it again, hopefully. Okay, so again, we've got this roundabout. We've seen it once already today. We've got the pedestrian crossing before the roundabout coming from this side. So obviously, if there was a bit of a queue for the roundabout, I'm not allowed to queue up on top of the pedestrian crossing, am I? As it is, I'm first in the queue. The car behind me is actually queued across the crossing, but they've not got any L plates on, so they're probably not on their test. They'd have had a bit of an issue, they'd have failed their test if they was. Um, so yeah, so be careful there. You don't want to queue up on top of a pedestrian crossing, of course. That's uh, not recommended. Right then, so because of the rubbish truck, we get a really good view at this junction here. You can see there's a blue sign on the right there saying that we can only turn right. There's a no entry sign on the road ahead. So we definitely don't want to go into that road. And there's also the road on the left. There's a no entry sign for that, which we can't see from our position here. Okay, so if we're in a two way road at the moment, I need to be quite careful with my position up the end here. So I'm going to turn right. If I thought I was in a one way street, I'd get right over to the right hand side, of course. But I'm in a two way street, so I'm going to pop my right indicator on for pedestrians. Pedestrians don't always look at road signs, do they? And then when the rubbish truck moves, okay, so they're turning right as well, of course. It's the only way you can go. You see the markings here, so I'm going to get onto my side of the road. I'm going to make sure it's safe, and then I'm going to turn out. I got onto my side of the road before turning right there, of course, because it's a two-way road. Someone might want to turn into it, and if I'm on their side of the road, then that's not the right place to be. Okay, so this road that I'm in now is one way. You've got the co-op on, on my right there. Got a little crossroad just going across here. And I'm not sure where the rubbish truck's going. I'm going straight across though. Unfortunately, they are too. Ah, no, they're positioning. So they actually reverse into that road. Fair enough. Okay, so they're reversing into a one-way street. Obviously, um, we're not going to do that. <laughs> it's not recommended. Um, but uh, they've got a job to do. Okay then. So we're in a one-way street then, so I'm turning right at the end of the one-way street, so I'm now going to check my mirrors, pop the right indicator on, and because it's a one-way street, I'm going to position over to the right-hand side. It's a huge, great end of the road here, so I'm not going to go into the extreme right. I'm going to get on the right-hand half, of course, because this is the correct place to be. But the further over to the right there that I go, the more difficult it's going to be for me to see. It's difficult enough because someone's parked on the double yellows there. There we go. Right then, so, and I'm gonna go right at the crossroads too. So I'm gonna to stop at the line here, seeing as the lights are red, I'm still in first gear. Okay, so I'm gonna move forward. Because I'm turning right, I have to give way to the oncoming traffic. 
Yeah, the Volvo there, they also want to turn right, so because I got to the middle of the road first, they just allowed me to go first. And we could have both turned at the same time. I could have gone behind them, they could have gone behind me. Far easier for them and for me, for them to let me go first, which is exactly what they did there. Okay then, so you've got the high street behind me. So what I'm doing now is just driving out into the um, residential area. And what I may be asked to do is take the second of the two roads on the right that are coming up. So I need to think about the timing of my indicator. And because there's um, a reserve bit in the middle here, I need to think about oh, my position too. So I'm going to indicate what would seem a little bit too early because there is a road there, but I need to get across to the middle safely. You see now how I'm in the middle of the road between the white lines. I've stopped level with the road that I'm turning into. And then I can just have a quick check in the mirror and then make my turn in. So, not difficult, but different to what you're used to potentially. There's uh, not many junctions like that that I know of, um, but there is one in Herne Bay. And if you're taking your test in Herne Bay, then uh, it'd be worth having a look at it before you go for your driving test. So we've got a couple of other bits, and uh, we're actually gonna come out of that junction shortly, because coming out of that junction is, in fact, a stop junction. So we're gonna have a quick look at that to recap on stop junctions. But before we do that, we're just gonna have a look at a little bit up the top here. So uh, we'll just cut the video off and we'll come back to that shortly. Right then, so we're just up at the other end of that road now. And what I'm going to do is turn right at the end here. It'll take us out towards the sea. We'll be able to see the seaside. Safe, good, okay. So what we're going to do is turn left at the end of this road. It's going to take us down to a very unusual corner where we've got a pub in the middle of the road. Just let me turn left. If you've never been to Herne Bay before, <laughs> you're gonna find this a little bit unusual. Okay, so it's safe for me to turn out. So basically, down here, the pub is the middle of the road. So I'm simply gonna follow the road, it just goes around a corner. Just got the sea on the right, sea in front of us, so we're just following the road around so we don't end up in the water. And you can see here, we just keep to the outside of the road, no entry signs on the right, so we're just following it around. And it's just a corner, just around here. No need to stop, no need to give way. Quick glance to the right to make sure though, of course, you know, cyclists uh, tend to have their own rules. And then we're on to a normal two-way road with lots of parked cars. We'll have another look at that again in a second. I'll just turn around and we'll come back and have a look at that from the other side. So we're coming back up to that same corner again. And again, the pub is the middle of the road. So normally we get white lines in the middle of the road. Here in Herne Bay, we get a pub in the middle of the road too great if you've had too many to drink in there so from this side i'm just keeping to the left hand side of the road of course like we always do and i'm just following it around and it goes into a hill maybe the examiner will get you to pull over and do a hill start maybe they won't and you can see there the white lines all just join up again after the pub and it just becomes a two-way road again so a little unusual um, but now you've seen it it won't confuse you too much when it comes to the day of your driving test Okay then, so we're just going to come down and uh, following the seafront along here. And then we're going to turn into a road and go and find that stop junction. Okay, so just a little bit further down that road. So we've got the sea on our left. I'm just going to turn up into a side road on the right here. Albany, Albany Road I think it is. No, it's Albany Drive. So let's take gear two. Parked cars, there's always parked cars in the way around here. There we go. So. I had to come into the road in the middle of the road, so I uh, had to make sure I looked into the road before I turned into the middle of the road. If anyone was coming out, I could have waited back on that uh, road where the seafront is. So I was going left at the crossroads here. So I'm just turning out of Albany Drive, left and parked vans, parked cars. It's usual for Herne Bay, <laughs> always. The age of these houses, very few of them have got driveways, very few of them were built originally with driveways, some have added driveways, but uh, most people are parked on the roads, as you can see. Um, you know, the age of the, these houses, it would have been unusual to have a car when they were built. So, okay then, so you can see up ahead then we've got that stop junction. We've got a couple of stop junctions in Herne Bay, and of course the rule is that we stop, don't be at a stop junction. So. Let's turn left at this stop junction. So I'm going to approach it, signal left with the uh, indicator, mirrors first before the indicators. You can see the stop line there. So as I get into gear one, I can actually see enough. I could have kept going there. I've come to a dead stop. 
and then I'm going. So you cannot see what I can see there, but I could actually see enough to keep the car moving. It would have been very, very safe. There was nothing parked up on my right hand side and I had a really good view. It was a great view. So if I'd have kept on moving there, it would have been fine. It would have, you know, no, no danger to me or to anybody else, but it would have been against the rules. I would have felt my driving test for it. And that's the point, of course. We're taking a driving test over here. So we've got to drive by the highway code and that means stopping at stop junctions, even if it's blindingly obvious that it's clear and easy and safe to go, we've got to stop at it. Even if somebody's stopped and is beckoning us out, we've still got to stop at the stop junction. Here's another one here, so let's go left at this one. This one's a little different, we can't see so much at this one. So again, I'm going to get into gear number one, in fact, I'm already in gear one, and there are some parked cars and a corner. Okay, dead stop, make a dead stop, and then I've turned out. So again, there I could have probably kept moving without coming to a dead stop, but um, of course, you know, that's not in the rules. We don't decide when to stop at a stop junction, we just always stop at a stop junction. That's what the highway code tells us to do, and that's what we're going to do on our driving test, of course. Okay, then, so one final thing to show you before I let you go off and go and pass your driving test. So uh, we're just coming along, uh, I forgot what this road's called. Um, so, we've got a uh, co-op on the right hand side there, roundabout coming up, it's going ahead of this roundabout, there's only one lane coming into this roundabout so we don't need to worry about our lane position, but I will take gear number two, keep an eye on the lady that's looking to cross, and it's actually safe, so second exit here, here we go. Okay, so C Street. We was on C Street, we're still in C Street. Okay, now you can see the traffic lights coming up. We're actually gonna go left at these traffic lights. So I'm gonna check the mirrors in to go left. You can see the uh, filter arrow there. If I was going ahead, then I'd be in the right-hand lane. I'm going left. And because the little green filter arrow's up, I'm gonna make my way through there. So as the light went green there, the little filter arrow actually disappeared. Um, but because I'm going left, the green light is as good as the uh, filter arrow, isn't it? So um, I kept on going there, even though the filter arrow has stopped. So this roundabout here, I'm actually going to take the second exit. So it's off to the left, but because it's the second exit, I'm not indicating yet. If I was indicating already, it would look like I was going down the first exit. So there's my gap, so keep it to the left lane. That's the first exit just gone past. Now I can indicate quite safely and take the second exit. And again, there's a couple of roundabouts like that in Herne Bay. It's nothing new, you've done it before. If you're turning left at a roundabout first exit, then that's brilliant, you can indicate coming up to it. If you're turning left but taking the second exit, then we just have to mind our indicator so as not to mislead people into thinking we're going down the first exit. We want to use the indicator to uh, show people we're taking the second exit, and of course, our road positioning is showing people that we're either going left or following the road ahead and then the indicator just backs it up for us okay then right so here we go then so i've shown you all the bits that i wanted to show you today good luck with your driving test in home bay follow us uh, for more tips of course and uh, we've got more stuff coming up not just about um the driving test as i said before but uh, other interesting stuff about cars about driving um uh, for after your driving test too so good luck on your test do let us know in the comments. Um, let us know in the comments if there's any other bits of Herne Bay that I've missed. Um, I don't know Herne Bay um, perfectly. Maybe if you live here, maybe if you're taking your test here and you've failed in a different road, maybe you could drop that in the comments to help some other people. So good luck and uh, let us know how you get on in your driving tests.